there's a good chance that you've never seen anything quite like this. This is the Apollo from Close Guitars. Now, Close Guitars is a company based here in Utah that specializes in making travel guitars out of carbon fiber. And as it turns out, they also make really killer basses. And when they wanted somebody to do a review, you know who they reached out to? That's right, Low End Lobster. <laughs> but Lobster was nice enough to drop my name. Uh, they invited me down to their facility and gave me a tour, which you can see that video right up here if you wanna know how these guitars are made. But in this video, we're just going to focus on the Apollo, how it sounds, how it feels. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of sound clips and then at the end, I'll, I'll tell you what I think about it. Just a quick overview of the specs. If you want more detail, go to the description. I'll have a link to their website in there. But this is their passive option with Close's in-house design dual humbuckers. So you just get volume for each pickup and a master tone. Close's in-house designed uh, hardware. So the bridge and the tuning machines are both of Close design. So uh, let's plug this thing in and hear how it sounds. Overall, I think that this is a great base for the price. It's really, really nice sounding. It plays great. I think you especially get a really even response across the entire fretboard. Fender basses are kind of notorious for having this being like a super dead note, but it seems like no matter where I play on this thing, everything sounds really, really vibrant and clear. It's also a very lightweight bass. This one in particular weighs about seven and a half pounds, and the Apollo Pro that we weighed uh, during the Close Factory Tour was six and a half pounds because it's got uh, their uh, aluminum hardware on it, which is a little bit lighter. In the lap, it almost feels more like a, a headless bass because there's so little weight out here. It, it balances really nicely, and, and it just, the neck just doesn't weigh anything. It's kind of crazy. The neck profile is pretty interesting to me. It's pretty narrow up at the top, but really chunky in your hand. It almost feels like a thicker stingray. And then as you go up the neck, it gets a little bit flatter. 
Oh hey, it's Captain Hindsight here. One really important thing that I forgot to mention about the neck is that you probably noticed this extra bit of material here at the end. And that makes it so that the gap between the pickup and the neck is really, really narrow. And that won't affect most people, but if you're big into slapping, that might interfere with your normal technique. I didn't find that it was that big of a deal. I worked around it, no problem. But I guess enough people have complained that Close said that for future models, they're planning on shifting this pickup back a little bit to open that gap up a little more. I guess this extra material on the neck is important for its stability or something. I, I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I just play the things. But the other thing worth mentioning here is that the cavity underneath this pit guard is basically completely open. So you can do whatever you want with the pickups. And in fact, Close encourages customizations. So if you want to do different pickups or different spacing, they can absolutely accommodate that. You just message them and they can still like turn around and get your base done in like two, three days, which is really impressive for, you know, some limited customization options. Really cool stuff. All right, we have to address this headstock because I know a lot of people are looking at this and going, and initially I'm kind of inclined to agree, but after having it around the house for a couple of weeks, I find that I don't mind it that much. I think it still looks really nice. I do think that this, this design would look really cool as a headless base but they very specifically said that they didn't want to go with a headless design. But while a headless design isn't really in the cards for these bases, they have told me that they are going to release a five string before the end of the year. So that's something to look forward to. Now I mentioned at the top of this video that Close specializes in travel guitars and the Apollo is a travel instrument as well. Now of course it has a pretty standard bolt on neck that you can deattach when needed. But the thing that really enables the travel aspect of this thing is the gig bag that it comes with. Now, at first glance, it looks like a pretty standard gig bag. It's made of this like backpacking material, almost like it's uh, more at home at REI than it is at Guitar Center. But you can, of course, use this like a pretty standard gig bag. It's very rugged and durable, has you know backpack straps on it. But once you take the neck off of the base, you have this neck sleeve that the neck goes into, and then it actually attaches to the side of the bag with these two clips here. And the top part of this folds down into the body of the gig bag. So now you have this very square form factor that will fit easily into the, the overhead compartment of, a, of an airplane, or maybe you just need it to be smaller size for travel. At any rate, this seems like a pretty good solution to having a travel base. But I thought we could test it out for real. So uh, let's go do that. <laughs> Well, that seemed to work out pretty good. Um, the neck bolted right back on there really fast. And how long did that actually take me? I didn't time it, but we'll see in the video and I will put that time here. That's how long it actually took me to get it out of the bag and put it back together and then plugged in so I could play it. And the setup really did seem to go right back to where it was. The only issue that I, I ran into was getting the strings back into the bridge. Um, I just didn't quite have enough length. So if I were to do this again, I would just do an extra wrap or two on the tuning machine and then it wouldn't have been an issue at all. But yeah, I think this is a really neat bass. Uh, definitely go and check them out. Website in the description below. And uh, if you want to see how these basses are made, go check out my tour video up here. This one. It's always above the headstock. It's left. <laughs> I got it. But yeah, um, go check it out, and I will see you on the next one. AMP out!